Hi everyone. In this session, we will talk about one of the design inspirations. This is a design inspiration I have taken from the product Pega. So today's use case is about asynchronous processing. So I'm going to explain you when I log in as a developer into Pega, there is a use case which is helpful to developers while trying to import something into the Pega system. It is going to take some time and that is going to give a progress bar on the screen. If you're already a developer, you must be familiar with what is shown on the screen. Whenever you are trying to import some CSV file into Pega system, then when import is happening for a few minutes, then on the screen you would see a progress bar. So today's session is more about to understand how Pega is internally doing this. And the motto of this session is to understand how Pega is doing this with the help of Pega. And if we know that tomorrow, if you come across any such use cases for your customer, instead of blindly just importing the Excel sheet and parsing the records and placing them into the clipboard structure, you can also think of some user experience patterns like this. Yeah, in my case, I have understood this in detail in some of my experiences like a few years back. And this has helped me. There can be a deep dive session to this as well, but in this, I'm just going to explain the very much basic of it so that some of you will be able to correlate how to treat these kind of use cases when they come directly from your customers. Okay, so without any further delay, let me get into the Pega application. Yeah, this is where I was just prior to this call, I was doing a quick dry run and now you would see a lot of details got populated into the data type, yeah. Now just before I jump into this, a quick context. For this demo, I have created one data type which is stock keeping unit in this terminology. Uh, there are so many SKUs and we see the attributes, SKU ID, SKU description, so and so product description, quantity, unit cost, total cost. Now you understood, okay, these are all the rows which are present here. These are all the attributes which belongs to so-and-so data type, perfect. Now, what if you have to import, so currently I have already imported 20,000 records. What if I have to import much more records, like one lakh records, then what happens? Usually that might take some time, maybe a few seconds, sometimes one minute, two minute, depending on how your platform is loaded at that time, right? In this case, to show you that directly the use case, what I'll do is let me empty this data table to start with. I have exported all of the data and now I'm clicking to import so that I can delete everything so that we start fresh. Okay, so right now there are entries in this. Uh, to start fresh, what I'll do is I'm trying to delete everything. For now, you, you just ignore what's happening on the screen. So all we're doing is just deleting all the records. So good. Now this is empty. Perfect. Now the import scenario, that means I already have a CSV file outside of the system, which is already in this format, which has these columns. And when I try to import, then Pega is literally parsing that CSV file. Okay, hope most of you are aware of CSV, that is comma separated value file. And I have a file in my system, which has exactly the same columns. Maybe if we have to just go through that before I directly jump into the demo, I can open one of it to show you one CSV file. Yeah, we're not talking about .xlsx file parsing in this particular session, but uh, still CSV would be, if you see, this is a CSV file. And uh, I mean, based on the extension, I can say that this is CSV. And you see, these are the columns which are there and nearly there are 20,000 plus rows in this. So I've taken huge number of records to show you a slight lag. Of course, even this processing will happen very much faster. But in reality, if you're receiving an Excel sheet with 50,000 records or one lakh records from your customer, and you need to parse it from Pega, which typically takes few seconds, uh, then that is the exact use case we are targeting here. Okay, now, since you have gone through the CSV already, now I'm closing that and let us let us try to import that into the system. And this is where, when I click on import from here on, you have to keep an eye on this. As of now, the table is empty, the data type is empty and we're trying to add all the records in this case and choose file. 
I'm choosing the CSV file, which has all of the records, which is good. And clicking on next, that gives me a nice preview of what are all the columns which are there in the CSV file, which I'm trying to upload, which is good. And then target field, what are the properties there in this particular class, which is mapped to each one of them. This is also good. Actually, if we go in depth, this will solve a lot of other problems, but we're not going into that for now. I personally feel this is a very powerful wizard which Pega is using. I shouldn't call it as a wizard. It is a screen flow. The implementation is quite powerful if you have to check it in the back end. But anyways, uh, moving on further, and also there is a template option here. If you would like to explore, you can explore that also later. But continuing to next. Yeah, this is where I can give some name to this import, which is fine. Uh, I'm starting the validation. The validation is taking certain amount of time, which is good. When I click on continue import, this is exactly where the import happens. Okay. I'll show you the design, how that's happening. Okay. Uh, let, let us go with it first and later we'll try to understand how Pega is doing this in the backend. When I click on continue import, it takes few seconds and uh, then the processing will be complete. When I click on continue, you see 8% and then 100%. It took few seconds, but on the screen, it didn't make the user to wait for a long time. I feel this is good. How this has happened in Pega, if you have to achieve this using Pega, how would you do that, okay? If you already have an idea that is good, feel free to comment. If you don't have an idea, go start going through this implementation in Pega. It's it's really good. I've gone through this and it personally helped me. And mostly I'll summarize towards the end what I have learned out of this. Also, you feel free to summarize what you have learned out of this once you go through that. But I'll take you through this. But now what I like in this is the progress bar, which indicated how much processing time it has taken. And while processing is happening in the asynchronous thread in a, in a separate track, it also showed me how much of percentage is complete after one second and then after a few seconds. So total time you see it took two seconds, right? Within that two seconds, total rows process is this one. Yeah, this is a nice summary. And also once everything is done, it gave a green indication on the top, like a banner, which is good. Even a layman can understand, oh, this is successful because it is green and by reading the message and the, the, there will not be any frustration. Just assume that if the records are two lakh records, obviously the processing time will be more. And then when you are waiting on the screen, you get this nice progress bar which shows the indication. This is the exact use case which I like, which reduces the user frustration. Now, okay, this is good. Maybe some of you are already thinking this is good, but how to achieve this in Pega? If you are curious to that level, now let me jump to the next one. For now, I'll click on this finish, which is okay. And again, let me show you uh, how this is achieved in Pega. Okay, for that, we'll do a live UI. Uh, okay, I have to choose a file. Let me choose that. I'm choosing the same file, add or update. In this case, I didn't change anything, but just to show you the, that's okay. Now click on continue import. Just before clicking on that, do a live UI to see what Pega is doing in the backend, okay? Now I'm trying to open that. And then I have a button. I've already gone through this before, so I'll save some talk and directly jump into the uh, actual. And this is the button which we click and I see that in the script it is trying to run the finish assignment and there is an assignment which it is trying to finish now the question comes oh in which part of in which screen flow we are there and which assignment we are trying to submit then we can trace the same I did trace prior to this you can also feel free to trace and then you'll get to see that you're executing a screen flow within this context okay within this you will find the flow in this case, this one, PX data records import. Okay, and then this is the screen flow, data import screen flow, where we have seen four steps we were traversing through, and this is where the import options were appear. And I go through this, I see a flow action, PZ import records. And once we submit that, then in the post processing, Pega must be doing something, right? So in the post processing, yeah, we do have PZ import records wrapper. 
and this is where we can see that okay while all of this processing is happening there is some asynchronous processing involved over here go through this in detail step by step that's okay be curious about each and everything because you are curious to know and expand your knowledge and this will be a good start these kind of designs will help you to understand how figure has developed this this is not some outdated code but still it is good most of them might think hey using a queue method is outdated no it's not it is still there are few use cases which tries for that i'm not saying asynchronous processing can be achieved only with the queue method this is one of such examples likewise there are so many other ones as well but you see based on how Pega is able to queue this PZ import records to the background, I mean, to the asynchronous processing so that that happens not in the same thread, but in a different thread. And yeah, once you open, then you will see more details. But overall, while this is happening on the front end, you're also seeing that the statistics, like how much your processing is happening, see 59%. In between, you saw that in a you know second, it took 59% and then it went to 100%. That means the processing is also keeping this progress for notified about this, right? So that, that's what at a very high level this, uh, I would like to share in this session. Hopefully you have got some insights. Uh, like I said, this is a high level session. If you would like to know more in detail, I hope most of you will be able to explore uh, at low level by going through this and by tracing the scenario but uh, feel free to uh, explore how these banner messages are coming and what patterns are applied here and these similar use cases you might find it very common in any of the applications you are implementing for the customers example you might be doing some parse excel in some of i'm not saying you have to leverage the same import pz everywhere in your application you can feel free to do that but in my experience where we have to parse some of the excel files in pega i have taken inspiration from this instead of me parsing the csv file i have seen how pega is doing this in the back end all i was doing is just invoking that functionality okay it's not that uh, simple but after analyzing everything, you will realize that how oh, you can literally use some of the portions of these code from the product design itself. Yeah. Okay. Hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to ping in the chat. Thank you.